What is up everybody? Just finished riding around with Nikki, parking lot practice, making her safer. And that's the goal of this channel, is to make motorcycle riders safer, physically and mentally, to be honest. And uh, that's what I'm gonna talk to you about today. Uh, how to scare you into wearing your freaking gear. You honestly do need to wear your gear. All right, let's go ahead and get on the bike. I actually filmed this on the way here and turns out that camera was not on. <laughs> so we're gonna talk about three deadly but common motorcycle injuries. And this is something that uh, I haven't really talked about. I haven't done a motorcycle injury video in a while. That's the thing. I've usually been talking about how to kind of prevent them. And uh, I think everybody knows what kind of injuries there are, but nobody's ever really discussing them. So we're gonna discuss them today. And a lot of this stuff I've seen, actually all of this stuff I've seen in person. I've seen in person and it's not good. So the first one, make sure I'm not forgetting every, anything. The first one is hemorrhagic shock. Hemorrhagic shock is actually really bad. <laughs> uh, you guys hear about shock in the movies. You guys hear about all those things like, oh no, he's going into shock and he's just like sitting there dumbfounded, like blank stare, not talking. That's not shock. That is a psychological like something. That is not biological shock. That is not the shock that you get from your body. Like, what are you doing? Oh my gosh, these people are weirdos. So that's not the same kind of shock. Uh, this hemorrhagic shock is when you lose a lot of blood. Hypovolemic shock is when you lose a lot of volume, which usually is blood or plasma or, or water. You get dehydrated and all that stuff. But we're really gonna be focusing on hemorrhagic shock because that is something that happens as an acute injury when you get injured in a motorcycle accident. Now, hemorrhagic shock, what it is, is low blood, and shock is basically hypoperfusion. Now, what that means is hypo is low, perfusion is basically, uh, how am I going to put this in layman's terms? It's basically what your body needs, like the cells, they need to be, have, they need to have perfusion. They need to have uh, liquids and blood and nutrients and stuff, so you have low blood, low nutrients being delivered to the cells um, that's basically shock hypoperfusion and with that there's some bad things if you get into shock your body shuts down your brain can't function your heart can't function your lungs can't function things can't function because the cells in those specific organs aren't getting enough of what they need oh my gosh it's getting warm so hypovolemic shock can be bleeding inside the body outside the body solid organs arteries really are very bloody solid organs are like uh, the liver um, so it's not hollow like a stomach you know how the stomach you obviously fill it with food uh, but solid organs have a lot of blood a lot of blood supply and so if you lacerate your liver during a motorcycle accident you're gonna have a lot of internal bleeding if you cut off your arm in a motorcycle accident or break your leg wide open and have an arterial bleed you're gonna bleed a lot and you're gonna go into hemorrhagic shock hypovolemic shock and you really need to think about your blood system, your circulatory system in terms of uh, like a pump, uh, the pump and pipe and water, all that stuff. So if you guys are familiar with pumps and, and water and all that stuff, uh, think of your heart as the pump of your body. The, the veins and the arteries are the, making sure this guy doesn't come in my lane. Your arteries and veins are the, uh, are the pipes, okay? And then the water, like in a, in a plumbing system, what are you doing? Oh my gosh, traffic is dumb. Uh, the water in your system, or the water in the pipe system is your blood. So if you run out of water, you run out of blood, the pipes aren't gonna do any well. They're not gonna be enough pressure on the pipes. The, the pump can't pump just air and water or air and blood. It's not gonna work. So you need to have a proper working pump which is your heart, you need to have a proper working set of pipes, which is your arteries and your veins and all that stuff. And then you need to have a, uh, enough water. You need to have enough blood in your system. So when you run out of one of those three contents, or some, one of those three things pretty much falls out, you go into shock and that's bad. So the only really way you could prevent that while riding a motorcycle is obviously being safe, being aware, using the C, search, evaluate, execute. That's what I was doing on the way here. I, I stopped myself from talking because I saw some potential hazards and I had to use my brain power to focus on that. So really focusing on those types of things it will help you pre prevent some of these injuries like hypovolemic shock. 
Uh, another thing you can do is obviously wear gear. So if something does happen unexpectedly, you are protected as best as you possibly can. So get high quality gear, get armor, get abrasion resistance, get a good helmet. And then if you have to, inside your backpack or inside a saddlebag or a tank bag or whatever it is in your, in your little case, get yourself a first aid kit. Uh, a lot of things that you could prevent with a hypovolemic shock is if there's an injury to the arm or leg and you're bleeding out, a tourniquet is very big. Um, that's really good. Uh, applying direct pressure to it until it stops bleeding is very good. I mean, there's a lot of things you should learn when you go riding. It's a lot different than driving a car. Oh my gosh, this light sucks. There we go. See, as soon as you say it, it happens. I'm gonna keep riding around for a little bit. Kind of want to get a, kind of want an energy drink. So the next one we're gonna talk about is traumatic brain injury. Now this one, this one's scary to be quite honest. This is exactly why we need to have good helmets. This is exactly why as motorcyclists you need good helmets. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and walk into QT. So we'll go ahead and talk about this when we get back out. Get the lean. Whew. Oh, what do you? Exactly, C, S E E. He looked like he was. Oh my gosh, these people! They looked like they were going to that, and then that guy was just gonna pull out. All right, screw this. I'm gonna get way over here. All right. All right, where were we? Talking about traumatic brain injuries. This one is actually really scary, and it happened to my buddy Matt uh, when he got in his accident on top of the uh, pelvic fractures and all this other stuff. So thankfully, he's still alive and. Thank God. Traumatic brain injuries are pretty bad. Uh, you hear that, you hear that traumatic brain injuries. You're like, man, the only way you can have one of those is, you know, if you get like a nail into your head or you blow off half your brain. That sounds pretty bad, traumatic brain injury. Well, actually traumatic brain injuries can be anything that happens to your brain because your brain is not supposed to have an injury. So it's traumatic and it could be as simple as you getting hit in the head and getting dizzy uh getting a concussion obviously getting knocked out is a traumatic brain injury it's not just called getting knocked out it's not just called getting a concussion it's getting a brain injury now what is a concussion you can have multiple types of concussions it ranges from different severities i'm not going to go too much into it but basically it, uh it's terrible <laughs> it just is a concussion is basically it, it's a bruise on your brain your brain was smacked around inside your skull so hard it caused a bruise on your brain. That is terrible. You can have bleeding on the brain. You can have your brain stem separate from your actual brain. You can have a brain bleed, subdural hematoma. Uh, you can have a bunch of stuff that happens to your brain. And really the only way you can prevent the severities, I'm not saying you can't prevent, you, can, you won't be able to prevent the brain injury. Okay, you can prevent the severity of it. Cause I'm gonna tell you right now going 10, 20 miles an hour on a bike and hitting your head on the ground or hitting your head against another vehicle, that's gonna cause a brain injury, okay? The severity of it, the, the amount of G-forces traveling into your skull will be reduced by a good quality helmet, especially a, uh, an ECE or a Snell rated helmet. A DOT, it, it can maybe do it. If it doesn't even have any of those things on it, then don't buy it, it's not a motorcycle helmet. You need to be aware of that. I've had patients where they've crashed their head, they're just loopy, unconscious, a concussion obviously. And then I've had patients where, with a traumatic brain injury where they were literally in their garage, okay? This is a true story. He was in his garage and he was backing up, he was walking back, tripped over his toolbox, hit the back of his head on the concrete floor and now he is just in a, and this was a patient at a rehab facility that I had to go to, and he was literally not able to talk. He was argumentative, he was like fighting. He, he was a completely different person. He was only 23 years old. Your brain is very important. You need to get a quality helmet and you need to do training. Training will prevent a lot of things. It'll let you see uh, bad issues that might be coming up. Um, if you train proper turning techniques, if you train proper braking and acceleration and throttle control, you will have the skills needed to maintain a, a safe ride. And that's really all you can do about that. Uh, traumatic brain injuries are serious. Do not take them lightly. Wear a helmet at all times, even if your state doesn't, rec or doesn't even, it's not law. 
Like Arizona, I can ride without a helmet. I'm sorry, but I do not want a brain injury. So the next one is a compromised airway, and this one really stuck with me. This one is a personal one for me. When I first started riding, I was wearing a three-quarter helmet, okay? I was wearing a Bell Custom 500 cabby gold helmet. It was badass. Everybody loved it. It looked awesome. And I thought it was I thought it was safe. I thought that's that's what it was. I first started riding. I thought it was cool. I had the cafe racer look and all that stuff. Well, uh, wintertime hit and I was working and there was a motor vehicle accident involving a, a vehicle like a, I think it was a truck or a suburban and a motorcycle. A uh, motorcycle T-boned the vehicle and the guy that was wearing or the guy that was riding was wearing a three-quarter helmet but he didn't have like a shield like I had it just was legit a three-quarter helmet just kind of relaxing with sunglasses and when he t-boned that vehicle I think that vehicle actually ran the red light when he t-boned it he went up and over his uh, big gold wing or big old bagger bike he went up and over and smashed his face he went face first into the side of the vehicle and I remember showing up on scene, he was dead, but I remember showing up on scene, he saw his helmet on, but his face was completely obliterated. It was gone. His nose was gone, his jaw was, you know, the, the front part was split wide open. His, you could see his trachea was compromised. It was literally like just mush. His tongue was in pieces and he was dead. I mean, there's nothing we could do. We tried to get an airway in him, but I mean, we pronounced him on scene after working our best. And I just remember, I was like, <laughs> I was like, oh man, I'm wearing a three quarter helmet too. And that's right there is what convinced me to get a full face. Now, the compromised airway. So that is dangerous. If you compromise the pipes that lead from the outside air to your lungs, and if they don't work, like asthma, if you have asthma, you, should, you already understand this. If they don't work, you're not getting air to your body. You'll suffocate and die. A traumatic injury, a traumatic uh, motorcycle injury that involves a compromised airway, what that will be is that you are literally causing a mechanism to slice and dice your, your trachea and slit your throat. That's, that's what's happening. I'm not gonna put that plainly. That's what, that's what you're doing. So you need to get a quality helmet, full face helmet, get something with a quality chin guard, Make sure you actually use it. So if you have a modular helmet, make sure you're actually putting it down when you're riding. Sorry, just put it down when you're riding. Um, you can flip it up on a whenever you want to take a break and stuff, but make sure you have a quality chin guard, something that will save your face. I mean, it, you can't breathe without a nose and mouth. I'm sorry, you, you just can't. There's, there's, you're not going to be like, oh, I'll be fine. I'll just get a mess up jaw. Well, imagine you can't breathe. And that's your last few minutes and seconds. I don't want to scare you guys. I really don't want to scare you guys. The main thing about this, I mean, I'm writing and talking about this stuff. The thing is you wear proper gear, you mitigate the risk by wearing proper gear. You take classes, you go to take total control, the MSF courses, all those things. Learn how to ride correctly so that if you do like a high side or low side crash, you can minimize that. You can actually, ch you can change your chances of having one by learning proper turning techniques. You can change your, your, uh, your risk mitigation. You can change all that stuff if you just focus on training and focus on having the gear while you train and focus on having a proper bike setup. Uh, these are all things that you need to do that a lot of people don't think about because they just want to go out for a ride and have fun. But it's a dangerous thing. This motorcycling is inherently risky. And the whole goal of this channel, the whole goal of what I'm doing is to make you guys safer. That is what I want. I want you guys to ride safe and be safe. I say that at the end of my videos all the time. And how that happens, there's many ways of doing it. Okay? There's many ways of doing it. One way is to subscribe. One way is to, uh, <laughs> is to be a DDFM member. But, uh... Guys, I want you to be safe, okay? So think about those three most common, common fatal injuries. And I want you to mitigate those by getting the appropriate gear and appropriate training, okay? All right, with that said, I hope you guys ride safe, be safe, and I'll see you around, all right? Whee! Oh, the Rebel 500 is so fun. <laughs>